KT McFarlane joins me now. KT, uh, I, I believe that China is in a corner. Xi Jinping has got himself in a corner here. And there's nothing more dangerous than an authoritarian regime in a corner. Is China going to lash out? Yeah, well, here's the worry. I mean, China is intending to replace the United States as the dominant world power, economically, technologically, militarily, etc. But just as they're about to sort of achieve what they think is their rightful place in the world, they're having real economic problems at home. I mean, for example, youth unemployment uh, is 20, 25 percent. They have a demographic time bomb. They have far fewer men than women because of the one China one uh, child policy in the 1970s and 1980s. And they have a very aging population. So as a result of all these things, the Chinese economic model isn't looking so great, particularly in the last few weeks as we've seen major failures in their real estate investment industry. So here's China expecting to replace the United States and then here's China running into trouble. What does a leader always do in a situation like that? Rally everybody around the flag. Look for a foreign fight to pick. That's what Vladimir Lenin's primary point was in Russia when they were taking over Russia. If you've got a problem at home, look at an enemy abroad. Rally the people around the flag. I, I want to talk about Biden's meeting with the leaders of Japan and South Korea at Camp David last week. That looks like a successful meeting to, to uh, solidify support against China. Was it a success? Yeah, and here's the backstory to that. During World War II, Japan occupied Korea. They've had embittered relations ever since. They've really failed to find an alliance with each other, trading alliance, certainly no security alliance. So by President Biden bringing those two leaders to Camp David, the sort of the inside the tent meeting, that's a really a prestigious invitation to go to Camp David and to talk to them about security issues. This is the first time the Japanese leader and the Chinese leader have met together to talk about mutual security needs and interests um, in really encountering China. As much as they say it's not all about China, it is all about China. The thing that really needs to happen next, though, is to have a security, um, have that security relationship, maybe even form an alliance, but also to have economic alliance between those countries. But, but is Biden's foreign policy in East Asia going in the right direction? Bag. I mean, this meeting is a very good thing, trying to forge a security alliance with Japan, Korea, the United States. There are various other efforts called the Quad to have security relations with our, our allies in the Pacific. What is not going in the right direction is what Bob Lighthizer was referring to. We are not treating China as an adversary. I mean, even President Biden calls them, you know, a competitor, an economic competitor. No, they're not. They're in a Cold War with us, and we've finally woken up to the fact that this is a Cold War. And China's intentions with their technology policy is to dominate the 10 technologies of the future, artificial intelligence, the Internet infrastructure, robotics. Um, they're also intending to have the strongest military in the region, certainly, but perhaps even in the world. They're ahead of us in certain missile technologies, hypersonic weapons. We don't have them. We don't even test them successfully. The Chinese are manufacturing them. So there are a whole lot of places where we really should up the ante with our military um, expenditures, with our military investment, with our military high technology. We're not doing that stuff, and that's where we should really be focused. Not on a war in Europe. It's got to be focused on Asia. Katie McFarlane, thanks very much for joining us, Katie. I know we will see you again soon.